Hello everyone, Eileen here. I have another Lavinia Stamps video tutorial for you today. And I'm featuring the beautiful Woodland Sprite Fairy on a gel press background. This is the card that I'd like to share with you. So let me show you how. I have uh, the Bob Along gel press from Lavinia Stamps and I've placed it on a non-porous background, so I've got it on my glass mat, and a few bits of copy paper. Lavinia Stamps Brayer, and I love how this Brayer roller spins. It's one of the best that I have. And Memento Pistachio ink. I'm using this for the background, because I want a very pale color. So inking up the brayer, not all of it, just half of it, and then onto the gel press, like so. Surplus comes off onto the copy paper. That should do it. Then moving on to Archival Inks, Cornflower Blue and Orange Blossom, and I'm using the archival inks to stamp onto the gel press using this beautiful maple leaf from Lavinia Stamps. Now I'm using archival inks because they are, they're, they are permanent, as you know, they're permanent inks, and, uh, but they're dye-based. They are not um, pigment inks, they're dye-based inks, so they shouldn't mark your gel press, coupled with the fact that you can see through them. One of the main reasons why I love Archival Links is their transparent feature. It's a property that I really go for because it gives me layers upon layer uh, in my work, which is why I use Distress Inks a lot as opposed to Oxides. Oxides blend beautifully, but Distress Inks, because of their transparent feature, along with my archivals as well, give me layers and, and that's usually what I'm looking for. So starting off with Cornflower Blue. Now they are dye based, but they are not water based. So they don't react with water uh, archival inks which is why they, when they're dry, you can use them to watercolour with. So I'm just going to pop this down here, like so. And again, inking up. So yeah, they don't react with water, so uh, as do distress inks. So I'll put three on there. So I think I'll do another one coming down from the top. So I'm stamping up now. I stamped up on the left hand side because I'm taking a print, the images are going to be flipped. They're going to be reversed. So this side is my, at the moment, right hand side. And that will be over on the left when I've taken the print. So I'm needing to bear that in mind for the design of my card to get the balance right for the design. And I think I'll place that one down there. Now I'm moving on to the archival orange. And I want to make sure my stamp is fairly clean. That would make a nice background, wouldn't it? Oh, might keep this piece of copy paper, cut it up. That would make a lovely background. Oh, yeah. Let's do some more of that. Right, so I'm going to now pop on the orange. It's a wetter ink pad, this. So you'll see the image and it will be clearer. Two there. And then, don't want to overdo this 
background to, because it's going to have a stencil on it as well. Put one there, and I think one more in orange on the other side. Like so. I think that should do. Now, depending on how heavily you press that stamp into the gel press, and I am careful because I don't want the uh, lines of the acrylic block to come out, but you can get sort of a ghostly look with your um, images, and that's what I'm hoping that I'm going to get, as well as the um, more solid image. So cardstock is Lavinia Stamps cream cardstock and I have cut it down it's not quite the same size as my gel press 18 centimeters in length by eight and a half centimeters in width so it's not quite as tall as the gel press down oh it's crooked not to worry I can sort that that wasn't very well done Eileen no Oh, but that's okay. I've got a little bit of a, a white space here, but I'll, I'm going to edge it anyway. But that doesn't look too bad. So I'm liking the pattern on that. So I put the gel press out of the way in a safe place. And I'm going to keep that piece of copy paper because I just love that pattern there. I wonder if I've got any more left on here. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, that's nice. Just gives me the ghostly image of the rest of the leaves. I'm going to use that so you can stay. Next, I want to fill in some of the space with a stencil. And I'm using the foliage of Flourish, sorry, Flourish stencil, as you can see, it's in a bit of a state because it's well loved. It's, I use this all the time on the gel press as well as in th this way, which is straight onto the cardstock. And then I have a blue, blue ink on this brush, but it, I just want to see how much I've got. Can you see this properly? Let me move that down a little. Just want to see how much I've got. Mm, don't want it too overpowering. And I just want to make sure that it is warm breeze that I'm using, which is a softer tone than twilight, which I'm going to use later. Right, this is warm breeze. And I'm just going to flick through very lightly, loose wrist, so I'm not too heavy handed. Yes, that's good. Now I'm going to add more ink. I'm just going to do this side so it actually covers that bit I've missed on the gel press. And I still will edge it, so that hasn't gone yet, but it will do. That's quite good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. So that's my stencil. Now moving on to Twilight. And my Misty for the main image, which is the beautiful Woodland Sprite. Pop those down there. She is gorgeous. So she's round about there, that will do. Like so. Maybe up a little. Right. Placed her in place. Placed her in place. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, now inking up.
I love this twilight. It's a beautiful blue. And it gives me the drama without using black all the time. Okay, let's see how that goes. Got some surplus ink there. Get rid of that. Sorry about the reflection of the lamp, if that's what you're getting. So popping her down and then gently but firmly pressing down. And there she is, she's gorgeous. Clean the stamp off later. She's not maybe as opaque as I would like. So you can either get the twilight and a paintbrush and just put the paintbrush in the ink and then paint uh, the body in. Um, but I could have stamped her twice. But I knew that I could use my polychromus and fill in any areas that needed a bit of help. So it should be fine now. That's it. So there she is there. Now the other thing that I was going to do as well is to highlight the fairy in archival ink rose matter and using a Lavinia Stamps moon. Pop it on and another Lavinia Stamps stencil brush. Just putting it on in layers, the colour. Take time, just build up the colour. Not very wet, the pad, so that's handy. And there she is. Now, because I've introduced the pink at the top of the card, I want to balance that out by adding some more of the pink at the bottom. And the way that I'm going to do that is with the uh, maple leaf. I'm going to ink up and stamp directly now onto the bottom, just the ones there. like so, brings in a bit of extra colour and then and again just on this side bit here and then lastly I'm just going to balance it out by <clears throat> bringing a couple of leaves down from the top in the pink again like so That's it, that'll do fine. That's good. Next, I need to add a few embellishments. So I have some gold sparkle pen, <clears throat> a quickie glue pen, excuse me, and some crystal glitter. So 
So starting with the gold, no, I'll start with the glue first. And so that will give it time to dry. So just outlining the sun or the moon. around her like so Tipping the glitter over. This is glamour dust. I've had this for donkey's years. I'm not going to brush that off until it's dried a bit, but I can put the bulk of the glitter back into my pot. I'm getting it everywhere. What's new there then? Nothing. <laughs> Using a soft brush, just take the residue off. So she's got a nice glittery outline. Put that back into the pot. So that's the glitter done, and now I'm adding some gold sparkle to these leaves not all of them just choose any one that you want to not being too careful i'm just putting the veins of the maple leaf in and if you make a mistake this gold pen is brilliant because you can move it about and it just coats the image with a bit of gold shimmer it's very forgiving this ink So I'm not doing them all, just a few. Just enough to highlight and to make them pop. The larger ones especially. I'll do all the veins in those. And then a few of them as well. I'm going to just draw around the whole leaf and that will bring it to the front more again not being too careful I'm just doing a squiggly line around it to be honest it's more of an impression than and than an accurate drawing of it loose that is the word it's loose <laughs> and if you make a mistake just use your finger and rub it rub it out it it, it is so forgiving that I'm still in shot with this yeah good I get paranoid that I'll go out of shot finish the video and then have to do it all again because I didn't take enough care all right uh, let's do this one at the top I don't think you're picking up how lovely this looks this gold on these leaves <clears throat> but it does make a bit of a difference now I've got to finally add the words 
with VersFine Clair, I'm going to add the words with love from the Heartfelt Verses set. Here it is. But before I do that, this is just a little, this area here looks a bit, mm, it needs a bit more help, I think, with the, with the stencil. I'm going to put the stencil back on because it's a bit gappy. I'm going to go for the lighter blue. Don't want it to be too dark. Looks a bit gappy. That's better. Yes, and here. And a bit here. So that was easy done, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. Filled it in. Right. So with love, the darker blue, which is the twilight... a lovely stamp but it's very you need to be very gentle with it doesn't like if you push and you're too heavy-handed with it so getting it straight and then down press lightly and up gently it's good I've got to ground my stem of the bluebell so I'm using very lightly this blue to match and then a bit of pink as well a bit behind it too and then finally I'm just adding a little bit of white as well white pen It just breaks up the harshness of the line that you're putting in. So that it is actually got somewhere that it's supposed to be coming from. And it's sort of springing from one of the leaves. <laughs> Back to one of the blue brushes. And twilight again, so I need my dark one, which is this one. And then I'm going to edge the card, but be careful. This is where I could really wreck it, you know. So everything is dry-ish. <laughs> Just going round. Don't want to be too heavy handed. There's a lot of ink already on this brush, so I need to be careful. So there we, ha we have it here. We have the one that I've just showed you, one I did earlier on, and all I did here was to cut a, a card blank, and I think it's about a centimetre deep uh, all the way round, so I just cut it from some white cardstock, and it's tenfold, as you can see. So this was eight by... Eight and a half by 18. I think this has got to be another centimeter uh, deep all the way round as well. And then I just place that in the top to give me the completed card. I'll let you sort out your 
um, card blank. I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. I really did. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me as often as you are. Thank you so much for the lovely kind words and messages that you leave me and comments on all the social media platforms that I'm on. And believe me, I'm everywhere like a rash. So thank you very much indeed. And I'll catch you again very soon. Take care now. Bye for now.